acquire skills that are so much more advanced um, because you go from the kinetic to the non-kinetic in, in a wink of an eye. I still have guns and uh, one fire team on that north south wing canal. I got you guys suppression. Go, go, go! Well, the hard part isn't killing your enemy, it's finding him. We don't know the boundary yet of where civilians live and work and where the Taliban are. Army infantry, our special operations forces, our marine infantry, continue to learn too many of their grim skills in the unforgiving, chaotic, and ethically bruising environment of their first close combat, where intimate killing is the norm. I had no clue what to expect from the local nationals. The training for counter ID was uh, pretty rudimentary. Well, a lot of the times, you know, it's just uh, notional training, you know, there's really no visuals. Our aviators, our naval personnel, our armored vehicle commanders are sharpened by their frequent use of highly realistic advanced simulators. It's time now to do for our young infantry what we've done across other domains. It's time to exercise tactical decision making and ethical decision making in simulators. The technology is available now. This training simulator does not compare to anything that, that has been given to us in the past. I'd use it to train my guys like we're going to war. Get down, get down. Roger, be advised, we are taking indirect fire. I'm not going to lie, I got caught up in the heat of the moment a lot of times. It certainly felt like I was back in theater, back running my squad like I did in my last appointment. So I could hear sounds, trucks, bullets, uh, people talking. I could run around, I could pick up binoculars and scan. It forces soldiers to uh, interact with locals and uh, utilize adaptive thinking. Uh, it's kind of like playing chess. It's you got to play ten moves in the game. Communication is one of the biggest things that fails in combat. With this program, you have to communicate, or you're not going to accomplish your mission. Hey, stand up, follow me. Hey, Where's it coming from? Where's it coming from? It really did relate to what happened over there. I think it's a cool system. It's just awesome. It allows us to be in an urban terrain, but also still have to work with local populace all around us. It's a lot of what they're going to see in country, and then the language barrier is definitely going to be there. And this is the first time we've had actors, and it definitely adds to the realism that it, that it gives to them. And just the environment that we're getting immersed in is much better. Tom, anything that betters this village is going to help us out too. It's not full full-fledged mount operations where we're 100% kinetic all the time, uh, but then there is events that could make it a kinetic environment. So we had calm from this unit right here, from this fire team here, seeing the lady come in, and we're told that she looks suspicious. Yes, sir. Dirty told me on the radio, some lady's walking around and looks like she's carrying something. Some rep told me it looks like she's holding something and she's wearing something under her. Okay. Let's let it play from here. So we can kind of read her body language and know that she's got some sort of a mission. We notice it and we take a shot, right? Good decision, bad decision. Buckingham. Good decision. It's time to build confidence in the young infantrymen who close with the enemy, create unit cohesion, and build trust within our small unit. We need only to integrate the vision of a future immersive training environment or fight and demand this of ourselves to meet the military, moral, and ethical challenges we and our coalition allies face today in Afghanistan and tomorrow in new wars. This is as close as you're going to get until you get to the real thing. It's time to make this effort a national priority.